<clears throat> the prosecutor got up and told you that this case is about Molly Tibbetts. And this case is about Molly Tibbetts. You all sat through some very disturbing pictures, some very disturbing testimony. You saw her body in the decomposed state. And your heart should break for Molly Tibbetts. Your heart should break for her family. Molly Tibbetts deserves justice. Her family deserves justice. But so does Christian Bahena Rivera. The defense position uh, is an interesting one because a lot of times you sat through jury selection and it was made a point several times that it's the job of the state to prove my client guilty. Oftentimes, you won't hear any evidence from the defense whatsoever. Oftentimes, the defense will just rely on the, the inconsistencies or the failure to investigate of the state. But that's not what we will do here. We won't just rely on the, the failure of the state to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. We intend to bring you witnesses, and that's because you need to hear what they have to say. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this case uh, is about a man that immigrated here from Mexico. You will hear about Christian's family circumstances and the reasons that he decided to come into this country. You'll hear about the differences in Mexico, that it's not just, you know, $7.25 an hour versus $12 an hour that someone can make for an income capacity that the differences between someone that is trying to find employment in Mexico and someone that is trying to find employment in the United States, it's a fraction that a person can make down there. And although we've brought this case and we've talked about immigration, because we must embrace it. We must embrace that uh, the evidence here shows you that Mr. Bahena Rivera came to this country. You can agree with it. You cannot agree with it. You know, you can be Republican or you can be Democrat. But the evidence here that you must decide, the evidence here that you must rely on, has nothing to do with that side issue. It's the, the black or the white socks that we talked about in jury selection. And what we ask you to do is when you evaluate the evidence, to set that aside. It's not part of the case. It's not part of the elements. It's just a mere fact that you must rely on. And what you must do is take all those other facts, take all those other things, whether you agree on them or you don't agree on them, and to decide whether or not you believe the evidence can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Now let's talk about this interrogation. You heard uh, Ms. Romero and I quibble between an interview and an interrogation. Now, was it an interview? Was it an interrogation? What you will see in this case is there's no dispute on the facts that my client worked 12 hours at a dairy farm, scoop and poop, cleaning grounds, and then at the end of his day, 
he was brought to the Powashee County Sheriff's Office. Now, did he voluntarily go? Yes. Was he asked, hey, will you come down? Yes. But something that you must decide and something that you must think about from the evidence is whether this man, this defendant here, a man who is a yes man, that's what the evidence will show you, go clean the stable, yes. Go do this, yes. Go do that, yes. And the evidence will show you that law enforcement came to this dairy farm. The evidence has shown you that they came to this dairy farm and everybody cooperated. Everybody did, took a buckle swab. Everybody did what they needed to do, consistent with what they did that day. And you hear about this interrogation. And then it went on and on and on. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see the entire thing. Uh, it's in Spanish. Unfortunately, you're not to hear the entire thing. It's in Spanish. But what the evidence has shown you and what the evidence will show you is that there was a systematic confrontation with my client. The first thing is he was talked to. You know, tell me about your life. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your daughter. Tell me about all of those things that are you, that are Christian Bahena Rivera. And then they started to confront him with the evidence. They confronted him with this videotape. They confronted him with these pictures. And they said, you know, we, we don't believe you. We don't believe that you weren't there. And the confrontation continued until it was put in my client's head, perhaps you blacked out. The state in this case, they got what they wanted, and they closed the case. They got what they needed. There was an intense amount of pressure, that's what the evidence has shown you, to close this case, to arrest someone for this vicious crime. And instead of continuing to work the case, instead of in continuing to work the evidence, they just submitted it to you. Now the first witness that you will hear from today is a Dr. Michael Spence. He is a DNA expert. He used to work at the Indiana State Crime Lab. He's done consulting work uh, in cancer research and other DNA evidence. And what he will tell you is that in that trunk liner, Molly Tibbetts' DNA was found. But he will also tell you that there were other contributors, that there were other sources, and that because only Christian Bahena Rivera's DNA was, test was, was provided and Molly Tibbetts' DNA was provided, because no other DNA was provided, those alleles, those, those DNA profiles, are unaccounted for. We do not know. You will also hear from different witnesses that knew my client. You will hear about his family. You will hear about his life. You will hear about his routine. This case, you've heard Mr. Fries talk about different suspects. You've heard, you've heard Mr. Fries talk about different evidence that was ignored or not looked into. 
And it is our job, it's our obligation to Mr. Bahena to bring forth to you anything that can cast doubt on the state's evidence. It's our obligation to you, to Mr. Bahena, to fairly, if we can, provide you with the evidence that does not support a conviction. Each one of you is an intricate person with very different backgrounds. Each one of you, you don't leave your common sense at the door, has a different story. Each one of you have different ways to look at the evidence. And what we ask you to do is to listen to our case fairly, to pay attention, and to remember that each one of you have the power to say no. Thank you.